Welcome back sa ating channel. Naging mainit nga na usapin di umano sa mundo ng social media. Tila nagsalita na nga rin si Mayor Magalong at isinwalat nga ang totoong nangyayari sa bansang Pilipinas. At tila pinaliwanag at pinakita kung paano nga lumulubog sa kumunoy ang bansang Pilipinas. Dahil lumulubog ng lumulubog at lumalaki ng lumalaki ang utang ng bansang Pilipinas. Dahil sa mga pulpolitiko na ito na puro na lang pangungurap ang kanilang ginagawa sa bansang Pilipinas. Dito nga natin makikita na sinasabi ng maraming netizen, maraming mga pulpolitiko na tumataas ang ekonomiya ng bansang Pilipinas at nababayaran ang utang ay tila kabaliktaran dahil ibinulgar na ni Mayor Magalong kung ano nga ba talaga ang totoong nangyayari sa bansang Pilipinas. Kaya naman talagang tameme ang mga pulpolitiko dito na tila pangungurap ang kanilang ginagawa. Tapos questionable na rin si President Bongbong Marcos kung talaga nga bang may ginagawa ito sa bansang Pilipinas para sugpuin ang corruption na nangyayari sa kanyang mga tauhan. Dahil kung makikita natin ay tila lalong lalo na si Lisa Smugs ang mga smugglings ay tila mga pinsat, kapatid at kamag-anak nila ang gumagawa neto. Kaya naman talagang kawawa ang bansang Pilipinas dahil sa mga korap na opisyalis na mga to. Kaya dapat may gawin na si President Bongbong Marcos sa isyu na to. Kung wala pa itong gagawin ay sana hindi na siya naging pangulo kung hindi niya kayang solusyonan kahit kaunti ang corruption na nangyayari sa bansang Pilipinas. Matatandaan natin na lumubog at umatras ang mga foreign investor dahil na pagtanto nila at nag-imbestiga sila na mga korap pala ang opisyales ng bansang Pilipinas at hindi di pinagkakatiwalaan. Wal mga kababayan para nga sa karagdagang impormasyon, panoorin nga natin ang buong video. At kung bago ka pa lamang sa akin channel, huwag kalimutan i-click ang subscribe button at notification bell para lagi kang updated sa ating mga bagong video. At para sa sulit viewers natin dyan, maraming maraming salamat sa walang sawang pagsuporta. Let me give you some facts about what is happening in the entire country today. Last April, news came out that our national debt is already at 13.86 trillion. Remember that when we started, when President Duterte started his administration as President of the, Fili of the Philippines, our national debt was at 5.7 trillion, accumulated for decades. In just a matter of seven years, our national debt increased by as much as 142%. We're now at 13.86 trillion. In short, we are already above the 60% debt to GDP ratio. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, each and every Filipino, kapapanganak pa lang, may utang na na 113,000 pesos. According to Cartua, our ability to pay our debt would depend on our ability to manage our financial leakages. And so I ask, ano ba yung financial leakage? And no less than the former Secretary of NEDA said, ang final leakage na sinasabi ko, a big chunk of that goes to corruption. And surprisingly, when the news came out na ang utang pala natin is already at 13.86 trillion, only very, very few members of our legislative branch. People from Congress raise hell. Ulitin ko, only very few raise hell. It is at this backdrop or against this backdrop that I will like to share with you this narrative. Last year, I was invited by the Civil Service Commission 
and the Department of Interior local government to talk before you elected officials twice. In one session, there are about 150 mayors. The second session, about 200 mayors. Last March, I was given a chance again to talk to about 1,100 municipal mayors, all members of the League of Municipalities. Three weeks ago, I had a chance to talk and speak before vice governors of the different provinces. In all occasions, my topic was technology and governance. Basically, how do you use technology in enhancing the way we govern, the way we process, the way we manage our local government unit? For the first 15 minutes, everybody was just so enthusiastic, listening to me, looking at my impressive presentation. And then I start talking about good governance. I start talking about traditional politics. I start talking about corruption in its direct correlation with poverty. And when I start doing that, they also start looking at their cell phones. Are we not going to ask ourselves, is corruption now becoming a norm in government? Is good governance becoming an exception? Nakakalungkot. Na meron na nga silang tinatawag na porsyento sa bawat project. Hindi pa nagsawa. May porsyento na nga sila. Sila pa yung contractor. Hindi pa rin nagsawa. May porsyento na nga sila. Sila pa rin yung contractor. Sila pa rin yung supplier. Unfortunately, only few people raised this issue. Tayos sa Philippine National Police, I've been talking to your CESPO, Louis Maclilan, and all the other RESPO. When they visited me two weeks ago, or that was about three weeks ago, we are willing to give or contribute a reasonable percentage of our pension plan or of our pension to national government to address this big issue. Pero nakakalungkot. Nothing have we heard from our legislators that they are willing to give up their pork barrels. Kahit malang sana sabihin nila na bawasan niyo yung pork barrel, but nobody, for some reason, nobody would admit na meron pala silang pork barrel. But now that I am with local government, the fact remains that there is still pork barrel. Tayo, in the uniform service, both from the armed forces and from the Philippine National Police, we risk our life. We risk equality time with our family. And we're willing to give up a small amount of our pension just to help national government, just to address the huge deficit just to address this big national debt. Hintayin natin kung anong sasabihin ng ating mga magigiting na legislators. Hintayin natin silang magsalita. Hopefully, one of them will come out in the open and tell us it is about time that legislators should also give a big contribution to address national government issue, especially on our financial debt. And that's the reason why Baguio City now is leading a network of local chief executives, very young local chief executives who believes in good governance, 
And us in the city of Baguio, we even went beyond that. We say, good governance beyond politics. And hopefully next month, hopefully next month, we're going to change that slogan. I would say, good governance, get yourself involved. As I've said, Baguio City is leading a network of young local chief executives, hoping that we will become a movement, hoping that we will transform ourselves into a COVID-19 virus, become a pandemic, become infectious, highly transmissible, highly contagious, so that we will be able to infect other local government units and local government officials and prove to them that true enough, good governance really works. Good governance is not only about corruption. It's about sustainability. It's about innovation. It's about dynamism, resiliency. It's about authentic leadership. It's a politics of hope, not a politics of frustration. It's not a politics of hate, but a politics of goodwill and understanding. It's not a politics of criticism, but a politics of encouragement. And more importantly, it's not a politics of lies, but a politics of truth. The essence of true public service lies in the spirit of being men and women for others. We are not merely here to enforce the law but to be a beacon of hope. We must recognize that each member of the community has a unique perspective and their voices deserve to be heard. By embracing diversity and inclusivity, we can build stronger and more resilient communities to thrive on the richness of our differences. To the Philippine National Police, led by General Benji Acorda, I want to commend your dedication and commitment to keeping our community safe. Let me also thank Major General Mario Reyes for inviting me today. Maraming maraming salamat, Mario. We have been together in the PCR. Your tireless efforts in maintaining peace and order are truly admirable. However, let us not forget that our role extends beyond law enforcement. You must be ambassadors of compassion, understanding, and justice. Your badge should serve as a symbol of trust, a promise that we are here to protect and serve all members of society and promote good governance. I urge each and every member of the Philippine National Police to join me in this very challenging journey of good governance. Believe me, it is the most noble among all the noble legacies that we are going to pass on to the next generation. As we commemorate the milestone in police community relations, let us recount or recommit ourselves to the ideals that unite us. Together, let us continue to foster an environment of collaboration, trust, and respect. I stand before you today, not just as a local chief executive, but as a fellow advocate for change, a former member of the Philippine National Police. Ako'y natutuwa dahil when I was going around Camp Krame, I saw a lot of development. And at the same time, I saw the demeanor of many of our policemen to, and police women today. I, I see a big difference. And that is a reflection of the outstanding and remarkable leadership that is now 
being led by no less than your Chief PNP, Benji Acorda. Isa lang masasabi ko, napakainit pala rito sa inyong lugar. To Police General Benji Acorda and the entire Philippine National Police, a pleasant day to all of you. And I stand before you humbled and honored and feeling at home as I address distinguished, distinguished assembly as we celebrate the 28th Police Community Relations Month. It's nice to be with people of my own kind. And admittedly and honestly, I miss the Philippine National Police. Our theme, Servisyong Nagkakaisa para sa Ligtas at Maunlad na Pamayanan, perfectly encapsulates the spirit of unity and shared responsibility that we must uphold in order to create a safe and prosperous community. Today, we celebrate the power of collaboration, meaning law enforcement agencies and the community for it is through this partnership that we can achieve remarkable progress. However, as we reflect on the significance of this occasion, we cannot ignore the challenges we face. It is no secret that trust in the police force has been strained. Incidents that undermine public confidence have left scars on the relationships between law enforcement and the communities they serve, we cannot shy away from this reality. Instead, we must confront it with honesty, with humility, and a commitment to change. Nakakatuwa na itong nakaraang controversial issue about drugs, hindi ito nasol ng ibang tao. No less than the PNP took cognizance of this problem. It was the PNP who led all the issues, all the investigations para maayos itong problema na ito. What is important is, while it is true that we fell, na dapa tayo, tayo bumangon, we learn from it and we move on. Building and restoring trust is not a simple task. It requires us to actively listen to the grievances and concerns of the community and to acknowledge the pain and frustrations felt by individuals who have experienced injustice or abuse. We must demonstrate a genuine commitment to accountability and transparency and take swift and decisive actions against those who betray the trust placed in them. Our efforts to rebuild trust must be accompanied by our collective efforts and shared commitment. We must work together with community leaders and every member of society to be able to foster an environment of safety and well-being. It is within this context an environment of safety and well-being, and it is in this context that we must recognize the vital role of good governance as a catalyst for positive change. Good governance serves as the cornerstone upon which our vision for a safer and more prosperous society. It is a principle that guides our actions, ensuring transparency accountability, integrity, and competence in every decision that we make. By upholding the values of good governance, we create a solid foundation for effective public service and meaningful community engagement. Let me temporarily set aside my manuscript. Instead, let me speak from my mind and from my heart. 
Well mga kababayan, makikita natin na matapang nga na isinimalat ni Mayor Benji Magalong ang totoong utang ng ating bansang Pilipinas. Makikita natin na pataas ng pataas, tila lumulubog na tayo dahil sa utang at dahil sa mga opisyalis na korap na ito. Tila kung hindi pa ito titigil ay talagang lulubog at lulubog ang bansang Pilipinas sa utang at magiging alipin na naman tayo ng kahit ano-anong bansa dahil sa kanilang mga ginagawa. Well mga kababayan, kung kayo ang tatanungin ano ang inyong mga opinyon, just comment below sa ating comment section at ating pag-uusapan.